When SpaceX first mentioned they would try to catch vehicles out of the sky a few years back, it seemed ridiculous. But now, it has become a reality, as SpaceX has successfully caught the Super Heavy booster three times in the most recent Starship launches and is gradually moving toward catching both stages of the world's largest rocket. However, this plan hasn't gone as smoothly as we thought. Starship Flight 8 lost its second stage after eight minutes of flight, leading to a complete change in the catching objectives for the upcoming launch. So, how has SpaceX's plan changed after Flight 8? How did Elon Musk react? Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. The sight of a rocket explosion over the Texas sky was far from the outcome SpaceX had hoped for with Starship Flight 8, their fully stacked test vehicle. Beyond the technical flaws that now require fine-tuning, this failure has also disrupted the timeline for Starship's ambitious 2025 program. Before the launch of Starship Flight 8, FCC filings had already confirmed that the license for Flight 9 specified that both the first stage booster and the second stage Starship would either return to the launch site or execute a controlled landing on water. Had Flight 8 successfully caught the booster with Mechazilla and safely landed the second stage in the ocean, Flight 9 would have marked the next major step, catching both stages upon return. The plan was for the second stage to return to Pad B and land using the newly constructed tower, paving the way for continuous testing of Starship's operational capabilities and the supporting launch infrastructure. However, the unexpected failure of Flight 8 has forced SpaceX to reassess its development timeline. No one can predict exactly what will happen next. But one thing is clear, the road to making Starship fully operational just became more challenging. Elon Musk has reaffirmed that the catch system will be perfected this year and will become a routine procedure by next year, stating, good chance of catching a ship this year should become normal next year. This suggests that in 2025, SpaceX might be on the verge of a significant milestone, perhaps consistently catching the super heavy booster or achieving the first catch of the Starship upper stage after re-entry. However, catching is not yet routine, as ongoing challenges, such as the explosion of Starship Vi-2 in Flight 8, continue to highlight the difficulties involved. As a result, the plan for Flight 9 will not follow the previously expected attempt to catch Starship. Instead, it is widely anticipated to prioritize stability and performance data over risky recovery operations, setting the stage for a catch attempt in a subsequent mission. SpaceX is expected to deploy Ship 35 paired with Booster 14-2, a combination that marks a notable milestone in the program. The first reflight of a Super Heavy booster. Booster 14-2, having presumably flown successfully on a prior mission, will provide engineers with crucial insights into the durability and refurbishment processes required for rapid booster reuse, an essential component of SpaceX's cost reduction strategy. Ship 35, meanwhile, will be the latest testbed for the upper stage's thermal protection system, propulsion reliability, and orbital capabilities. The lessons learned from Ship 34's failure in Flight 8 will undoubtedly inform modifications to Ship 35, though SpaceX has yet to publicly disclose the specifics of those adjustments. This decision to delay the attempt to catch Starship reflects a pragmatic shift in priorities following the outcome of Flight 8. Flight 9 is expected to focus on gathering telemetry data and validating fixes rather than attempting a high-risk recovery. This iterative approach exemplifies SpaceX's test, fail, learn, repeat philosophy, a method that has driven the Starship program forward despite occasional setbacks. Looking ahead, Flight 9 promises to build upon both the successes and failures of its predecessors, offering a clearer picture of the Block 2 design's readiness for operational missions. Whether it achieves a stable orbit, conducts a controlled re-entry, or simply provides more data for the next iteration, this mission will be a critical stepping stone toward SpaceX's ultimate vision, a fully reusable spacecraft capable of carrying crew and cargo to the moon, Mars, and beyond. As the company continues analyzing the anomalies of Flight 8 and prepares for the next launch, the global space community watches with anticipation, eager to see how Flight 9 will shape humanity's path to the stars. This is truly a launch filled with hope and promise for the future of Starship, it's exciting to think about what comes next. But why is catching Starship so much more challenging compared to catching Super Heavy? Catching the Starship upper stage is significantly more challenging than catching the Super Heavy booster due to a combination of technical, environmental, and operational factors. SpaceX's innovative Mechazilla Tower, with its chopstick arms, has successfully caught three Super Heavy boosters, as demonstrated in Flight 5, Flight 7, with Booster 12, Booster 14, and Flight 8 with Booster 15. 
proving the feasibility of the concept. However, extending this capability to the Starship upper stage introduces additional layers of complexity that make it a far tougher engineering problem to solve. The flight profiles and trajectories of the two vehicles differ dramatically. The Super Heavy booster separates from Starship early in the flight, typically at an altitude of around 60 to 70 kilometers, and returns to the launch site shortly afterward via a suborbital path. It performs a boost back burn to redirect itself toward the Mechazilla Tower, followed by a controlled descent using its grid fins and engines, making its trajectory predictable and manageable. In contrast, Starship is designed to reach orbit or a high-altitude suborbital trajectory, traveling much farther and faster. After completing its mission, it must re-enter Earth's atmosphere from space, decelerate, and navigate back to the launch site, a far more complex and variable journey. Atmospheric re-entry introduces another major hurdle for Starship. The super-heavy booster avoids the extreme conditions of orbital re-entry, ascending and descending through the lower atmosphere at suborbital velocities, typically less than 2 to 3 kilometers per second. This results in manageable aerodynamic forces and heat loads, simplifying its return. Starships, however, must withstand the intense heat and dynamic pressures of re-entry from speeds up to 7.8 kilometers per second or higher. Its thermal protection system, TPS, made of thousands of ceramic tiles, shields it from temperatures exceeding 1,400 degrees Celsius, 2,550 degrees Fahrenheit. But maintaining stability during the belly flop maneuver, where it falls horizontally to maximize drag, is difficult. Any misalignment or TPS damage, as possibly seen in Flight 8's Ship 34 anomaly, could destabilize its descent, complicating a catch attempt. Precision and timing further differentiate the two tasks. The booster's return happens within a tight six to eight minute window after launch, allowing SpaceX to fine tune its landing with thruster firings and grid fin adjustments to align with Mechazilla. Its larger size, about 70 meters tall and over 200 tons dry, also makes it a stable target for the tower's arms. Starship's return, however, could take 20 to 60 minutes depending on its mission, and its smaller size and higher descent speed demand exceptional accuracy. The transition from belly flop to vertical orientation using its Raptor engines must be perfectly timed, and even slight deviations due to wind, engine performance, or guidance could make it a harder target to catch. Control and maneuverability also play a role. The Super Heavy booster, with up to 33 Raptor engines, has immense thrust and robust control during descent, aided by grid fins for aerodynamic stability. Its landing burn, refined through years of Falcon 9 experience, allows for a controlled hover or soft touchdown, easing the catch process. Starship, with only three to six Raptor engines and aerodynamic flaps, relies on a rapid flip maneuver and precise engine ignition to slow its fall. This sequence is riskier and less forgiving. Any delay or misfire could lead to an uncontrolled descent, leaving little room for Mechazilla to adapt. Structural and design differences add to the challenge. The booster's cylindrical shape and robust build are optimized for vertical landing and catching. With a wide base and attachment points well suited for Mechazilla's grasp, Starship's sleek, tapered design and heat shield tiles, while ideal for spaceflight and re-entry, are less accommodating for catching. Its catch points, likely near the top, must align perfectly with the tower, and the fragile TPS tiles could be damaged by any collision or misalignment threatening reusability. Finally, the maturity of testing highlights the gap. By March 10, 2025, SpaceX has successfully caught at least one booster, building on years of Falcon 9 landing expertise and proving the booster catching process. Catching Starship, however, remains untested, with its re-entry and descent profile still being refined as evidenced by Flight 8's issues. The shift to tower-based catching introduces new variables that SpaceX is still working to master. In summary, while catching the Super Heavy booster is an impressive achievement, catching Starship is a steeper challenge due to its orbital trajectory, re-entry stresses, and precise maneuvering requirements. Mechazilla's success with the booster lays the groundwork, but adapting it to snag a spacecraft plummeting from space demands further innovation. Flight 9 and future missions will continue to tackle these hurdles, bringing SpaceX closer to its goal of full reusability. Starship reusability is a game-changer for Mars exploration because it tackles the biggest hurdle in space travel, cost. SpaceX's Starship, designed to be fully reusable, slashes the price of getting to orbit and beyond by allowing the same vehicle, 
both the Super Heavy booster and the Starship itself, to fly multiple missions. Traditional rockets, like NASA's Saturn V, or even the Space Shuttle, which was only partially reusable, were mostly expendable, meaning billions of dollars went up in flames or sank to the ocean floor with each launch. The approach of a Starship is more like that of an airplane. Launch, land, refuel, and repeat. For Mars, this matters immensely. A one-way trip is impractical for sustained exploration or colonization. SpaceX's endgame isn't just a flag and footprints mission, but a self-sustaining human presence. Reusability means you can send not one, but dozens or hundreds of missions carrying cargo, habitats, and people without bankrupting the effort. The numbers back this up. SpaceX aims to get launch costs down to a few million dollars per flight compared to the $1.5 billion per launch of the Space Launch System, SLS, which is expendable. That's orders of magnitude cheaper, making the economics of a Mars base feasible. The technical side is just as critical. Starship's stainless steel design and Raptor engines are built for durability and rapid turnaround. The Super Heavy booster lands back on Earth minutes after launch, while Starship itself can land on Mars. Refuel using in-situ resource utilization, ISRU, think methane produced from Martian CO2 and water ice, and fly back. This closed-loop system eliminates the need to build a new rocket for every return trip. Without reusability, you'd need a whole new fleet for each wave of missions, which is logistically and financially a non-starter. Elon Musk's timeline hinges on this. He's talked about uncrewed Mars landings in the late 2020s and crewed missions shortly after. Reusability is the backbone of that ambition. Without it, the sheer volume of launches, think 1,000 starships for a million-person colony, would be impossible. Let's examine the progress. By March 2025, SpaceX had successfully conducted multiple test flights, with the 5th, 7th, and 8th flights successfully catching the Super Heavy booster mid-air using the Mechazilla Tower. Each success validated the concept and reduce the risk of Mars missions becoming one-off, high-stakes endeavors. The challenge? Reusability adds another layer of complexity. Precisely landing a rocket, refurbishing it, and ensuring it is safe for the next launch is no easy task. The early Falcon 9 landings exploded spectacularly before the system was perfected. Critics argue that this could delay Mars' plans if reliability is compromised. However, SpaceX's track record shows they iterate rapidly and learn even faster. Mars is not just a destination. It's a driving force for perfecting technology. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.